expectations just flipped for the Bitcoin market, for the crypto market, for stocks. I want to talk about that and talk about what's happening in the market. We were out and about here today. You might have saw, you might have seen our last videos, Connor's and mine. But now we're back in the office, really diving into what happened here today. The devastation, Bitcoin down significantly. We have Bitcoin down to, what, 62,000? Not looking fantastic. We have uh, ETH down significantly. Let's actually pull up the the overall market on coin market cap. And to be clear, I will talk about my long-term thoughts on this market, but yeah, ETH right around 3,000, Solana at 150. It's an ugly, ugly day in the last seven days for the crypto market, but there's a light at the end of the tunnel. If you don't mind, stay through to the end because there's a lot that we're going to cover. If you do want to trade cryptocurrency, you zoom out. You know, you have done quite well. If you want to trade crypto, there's a link to Margex underneath the video where you can start trading in just a few seconds. There's also a link to CoinW as well. If you want to try out a different platform, they're giving a sign up bonus, a deposit bonus, where if you deposit so much, like for example, $10,000 and then do 300000 in trading volume, you get 3000 in USDT. So let's start here. Global M2 money supply is breaking out to new all-time highs. Bitcoin will absorb this freshly printed money like a sponge. Okay, that is a good sign if you don't know what M2 is. It's basically money in certain accounts. Uh, so as liquidity as M2 or M1 or uh, just global liquidity goes up, there's more money in the world. It's looking for scarce assets. It's looking for valuable assets. That means it moves to Bitcoin. And you're saying, okay, that's great. Why is the price down though today? Like, oh, why the heck are we talking about how this is so good for Bitcoin as Bitcoin's falling? Well, we did have unemployment rate uh, come in. We had July payrolls lower than expected. We have some indication that maybe we're going into recession based on the unemployment rates moving up pretty quickly. It was a bad day for the overall markets with 2.9 trillion wiped out from major indices just this morning. The NASDAQ was down 2.43%. It got worse throughout the day, then got a little bit better. But some, take a look at this. Intel stock, just devastated, down 26% here today. Imagine a hundred plus billion dollar company going down 26% in a day. Okay, so obviously there's a lot of pain in the market. There are people worried about recession. Payrolls are coming in lower than expected. And you know what's interesting? They're actually repricing the market. The Fed is now expected to cut by 50 basis points in September. Just a few days ago, the Fed said they're not really considering, they haven't really made a decision, but they're not really considering 50, 50 basis points in September. Now the, the Fed rate monitor tool says there's a 70% chance that we see a 50 basis point cut. 30% chance that we see a 25 basis point. And this has changed drastically since yesterday. Previously, instead of 70% likelihood, there was 28%. A week ago, there's 13.2%. So now the market is pricing in much more. They're even pricing in a likelihood that we'll see another 50 basis point rate cut in November. And then you know what? Another 25 basis point in December. So instead of 0.75. Now the market's pricing in 1.25. So you know what that's good for? It's good for assets that are interest rate sensitive, such as high risk assets like crypto, such as real estate. So if you're in either of those, obviously it depends on if we hit recession, but this, this little uh, jobs report here today, the unemployment rate moving up might actually be good for your bags if you can hold on to your job, obviously. But with Global M2 going to new all-time highs, this is without the Fed starting to lower rates in the U.S. This is setting up to be a very interesting fall in winter. Morgan Stanley tells wealth advisors they can pitch Bitcoin ETFs in a first for major Wall Street firms. You have to remember, a lot of people haven't even had the access to start buying these ETFs. A lot of people haven't started buying Bitcoin. Just yesterday, we talked about how there was uh, an RIA, a wealth advisor, that just started allocating 1% to Bitcoin with their 230 families that invest through them. So this is 230 wealthy families that are now putting 1% towards Bitcoin. 
and then it will probably be two, three, four, five. Maybe it stops at you know three to five percent. Maybe it continues moving up. But imagine that's just the first tranche of people. That's just the first group of people, and then they're going to be the later adopters. They're going to be the people that buy it in retirement funds. But overall, you can see the way that the world's moving. I mean, take a look at what Donald Trump just said. Not that everyone gives him a lot of credit for you know saying what he's actually going to do. But let's let's play this clip here for you. And wipe out our trillion. It's a little bit quiet. Who knows, maybe we'll pay off our $35 trillion, hand him a little crypto check, right? We'll hand him a little Bitcoin and wipe out our $35 trillion. Okay, so if you couldn't hear that, he says maybe we'll pay him, uh, we'll pay off our $35 trillion debt by handing them a little crypto check, handing them a little bit of Bitcoin. Uh, so basically, maybe that's a way that we can wipe away our debt. And Michael Saylor did talk about that. Uh, I have a full video on the channel if you haven't seen that. Michael, just type in Michael Saylor, my financial friend. And I'm sure it'll be one of the first things that come up from his speech just a week ago on how nations can do this. Like the blueprint is out there for nations to start buying Bitcoin and how much they need to be really wealthy. (coughs) So yes, right now we are seeing red in the market. We're seeing some blood in the market. We saw actually the SEC cancel their closed door meeting yesterday. No reason was given, but a lot of these meetings are for like crypto related uh, talks. So uh, it's kind of interesting, but overall, I think we're in a fine place. Like, of course we could always fall down further. If you look here, we're only in the midpoint of this range from when we went to 70 all the way down to 53. Actually, we're actually on the higher end, right? We've fallen down about $8,000 here recently. If we fall down another 8,000, we're only at fifty four thousand five hundred which is still above the bottom of this range so we could fall further but honestly i'm pretty happy with where we're at we trend sideways during bull markets to be clear that does happen like just look here we ran up to 14k and then went sideways from what july or june to the next October, like a year and a half later, this can happen where we go, like even when we start to approach a bear market or a bull market, you can go up 5X and then go down 60%, 70%, then back up and then you start the real bull. Now, I don't think we're going down 60% or anything like that. I know there's some people that are saying that on Twitter. It's possible. I don't see it as probable. Let me know your thoughts on that underneath the video. But if you do want to trade this market, if you do think we're going down or if you think we're going up, you can trade. I personally don't really like to short the market too much. Sometimes I have shorted individual cryptos that have their own narrative, but I do not like shorting Bitcoin because it's kind of like jumping in front of a freight train thinking maybe it will stop in time and go in reverse, which sometimes, you know, sometimes freight trains, well, no, freight trains don't, but sometimes cars go in reverse but you don't really want to bet on that, right? Generally, they move forward. Generally, Bitcoin goes up. So yeah, I am, I'm staying on the right side, I think, of this trade, of these trades by going long the market and step short the market. Let me know your thoughts though underneath the video. Of course, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.